Uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, and I'm, I really want to thank uh, Councilman Salamanca, who represents this area, uh, and his immediate concern uh, for the families here. And I, I'm really hoping uh, that you can get the video of the responding officers who responded immediately uh, to the scene uh, just to see the heroic action uh, that took place here. And I'm joined here uh, again by Vanessa, Gip Vanessa Gibson, our borough president, uh, who has been uh, dealing with, you know, this is the second major crisis that she has responded to. And I just want to thank you, Vanessa, uh, just for the consistency in being here for these families during this time. Also, Lieutenant Governor uh, Brian Benjamin and Congressman uh, Richie Torres as well. And we're joined by our agencies. They have, they've had a, an extremely busy, busy week, but their level of professionalism is what's needed during this time, these times of crises. A crisis, does, uh, a crisis will not wait until we're ready for it to respond. We have to always be ready to respond. Uh, the FDN, FDNY Chief uh, John Hodgins, uh, acting uh, OEM Commissioner Christine Farrell, uh, as as well, and the countless number of men and women who are part of the FDNY and the police department are uh, responding to this emergency here. Uh, right now, we have eight injured, uh, one fatality. Uh, our hearts go uh, hearts go out to the family members of the lost uh, lives. But clearly, uh, the action of FDNY and NYPD and residents, uh, their quick response, uh, really allowed uh, many that were a part of this crisis uh, not to uh, uh, in some way be seriously injured or to die in this issue. And so I want to thank them. Included in the two people in serious conditions at hospital, uh, our hearts again go out to them. Uh, this tragic and frightening uh, event uh, after the inferno we saw just days ago just really uh, add uh, the pressure on the Bronx and uh, all those who have experienced in overcoming this issue, as it seems, uh, to continue to unfold right now. Uh, the professionalism that was displayed, the five officers that sustained injuries during this rescue effort, uh, we want to thank them for their actions. Uh, but we saved lives today. Our actions saved lives. And when you, as I stated, when you see the body cam video, you're going to see the quick response of the officers going into a burning building next door from the explosion, not realizing uh, if there would have been an additional explosion, but they went inside and carried out a woman who was trapped inside. And we're hearing countless stories uh, from those who are in the hospital, who are the homeowners in this area. So there's so much we need to find out about this incident. Uh, it's an ongoing investigation to determine what's, what happened. Con Ed is here. The investigation will determine exactly what happened here. Right now, gas is off on the entire block. Uh, you know, as the councilman stated, we want to uh, get the gas back on as quickly as possible because we have a lot of seniors uh, that live on this block. These are small homeowners, and it's really the bedrock of this community. And so the goal is, is to do an expeditious but safe investigations so we can get people back into, into their homes. Uh, we want to make sure all New Yorkers are safe. And that is the goal of what we want to accomplish here. We're going to have uh, the FDNY chief to give an official uh, overview of what took place based on our preliminary investigation. But first, I just want to really turn it over to our councilman. This is his council matter district. And uh, having him here on the ground, he's going to be here throughout the night uh, with our services to make sure that we give the support that's needed to these families. As I communicated with them uh, in the church, that we're going to be here for them to make sure they get the services they, they need. Uh, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I really appreciate you coming down here to the South Bronx in our time of need. For many of you that know, the Bronx has always been a, a borough that's no, that understands, well, not that understands, that has, been, has always suffered back in the 70s and 80s from fires. And this is nothing new here in the South Bronx. When you look around and you look at all these buildings, the 70s and 80s, many of these buildings were burnt down to the floor. These homes behind me 
were part of the revitalization of the South Bronx that Father Gigante and Sister Thomas made uh, back, in the, back in the 80s, late 80s, beginning of the 90s. And to see, uh, to see these, these fives really breaks our hearts and breaks our homeowners' hearts. But what I did see here today was as I was talking to homeowners, they knew who and the names of those individuals that lived in each and every one of those homes. They knew who was missing. There was one gentleman who they thought was missing, and they found that he was, they found him in Puerto Rico. They were able to call his family. I cannot say how thankful I am for the 4-1 precincts of really going out of their way, the captain and his other four officers risking their lives to save, uh, to save families there. When the mayor and I were inside the church, we spoke to, we spoke to a family, we spoke to a lady, so she was stuck inside her apartment. She could not open the door, and the fire department were those that saved their lives. So I really have to thank FDNY and NYPD for really going out of their way and saving lives. In español, le quiero dar las gracias al alcalde por todo por estar aquí con nosotros, y también quiero que ustedes realicen algo. El sur del Bronx o el, el sur del Bronx siempre nosotros hemos tenido la experiencia de fuego. En los 70 y en los 80 sabemos que teníamos muchos dueños de building que se querían salir y lo que hicieron es que pusieron fuego a estos building. Lo que, los, las casas que tenemos aquí a, a, atrás de nosotros fue parte de realizar y traer el, el development para atrás a nuestra comunidad. Estas casas están aquí desde los 80. Eh, es un orgullo para estas familias de ingreso bajo que pueden ser dueños de casa. Lo que, lo que ocurrió aquí nos ha devastado a nosotros, pero sabemos el amor que nuestras familias tienen para uno al otro. Cuando yo estaba hablando con los, los dueños de casa, ellos sabían que los nombres de cada persona que vivía en esa casa, aunque eran dueños o tenants. Cuando estábamos adentro, hablamos con, con ciertas familias, dueños de casa, que dijo que el departamento de, de bomberos tuvo que forzar la puerta abierta y le salvaron la vida. Y también el capitán del precinto 41 con sus oficiales fueron y salvaron la vida de otra persona. Y van a ver un video. So, le quiero dar las gracias al policía, departamento de policía y los bomberos y el, y el alcalde por estar aquí. Y realmente, I thank you for really taking care of us in the South Bronx. Thank you. Yes, yes. And now I'm going to bring on Fire Department Chief of Department John Hodgins. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, fire Department received the call uh, this morning and uh, we responded and we were here within four minutes. Uh, there was a, a large explosion of one of the dwellings um, that was attached on both sides by other buildings. Um, our units quickly entered the buildings that were not collapsed to conduct searches just in case there were any occupants uh, that did not get out. Uh, we did not find anybody else, which is good news. Um, there were two sisters from the fire building that were inside the building when it exploded, and our units uh, saw them laying on the ground outside and were able and, and working in conjunction with our EMS units. We, we took those people and we got them to a hospital quickly. Unfortunately, one of them has uh, succumbed to the injuries and has, um, has passed away. The other victim, it was the third victim of this, was the uh, woman that was removed by the NYPD officers uh, very quickly upon arrival. When we arrived, we also went in and searched those buildings, uh, as, I, as I had already stated. Uh, this was a great uh, joint operation uh, between many agencies, uh, Con Edison, and the Bureau, our Bureau of EMS, we work together um, just to, you know, safely, as safely as possible, extinguish this fire. We used approximately 200 fire and EMS personnel from our agency, and we're continuing to investigate, to drill down and to find out exactly what caused this. And we will be on scene, you know, operating as we sift through the rubble just to um, look for any type of evidence. We go do it after. Uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. Question after. And also, uh, acting uh, OEM Commissioner Christine Farrell. Thank you. Commissioner? Thank you. Uh, like the other agencies, emergency management is here. We have our responders in the field that are coordinating with Con Ed, with buildings, with housing preservation and development. 
um, you know, to get, like the councilman and the mayor said, to get the gas on back in the uh, houses where we can do that uh, pretty much immediately uh, once this incident happened. Uh, St. Athenaeus Church, the church right there, opened its doors and uh, residents affected people were able to go in there. The Red Cross also got here very, very rapidly. They are working um, with the residents to get them food, water, other immediate needs that they have. And for people, obviously, some of these buildings are destroyed. And um, for people that need housing, anyone on the block tonight, if they need housing, we will work that out in area hotels. Uh, there are a couple of reports of pets. We will work with the agencies to remove any pets that need to be. And just like uh, the fire last week, working with all the elected officials in the agency, and that we will have coordinating through the city, the state, the nonprofits, we will be here and we will do that. with the city, uh, DPS, and what's here on the ground today, and we'll continue to, to aid the city to make sure we get to, to, on to the bottom of what happened, and we make sure that this happens, this never happens again. My heart goes out to the families who've been, who've been affected. The governor and I will make sure that the state does everything it can, financially and otherwise, to help those who have been impacted, these homeowners who've been impacted uh, by this tragedy. I want to thank Mayor Eric Adams for his, his efforts for a couple of weeks. You sure had a, a busy time, Mr. Mayor, but he has been here and he's been fighting for New Yorkers, and that's the kind of mayor that we want. To the hundreds of first responders, firefighters, emergency personnel, and in particular, I want to give a big shout out to the NYPD, the officers who risked their lives to save other lives. I know there are times we give the NYPD a hard time. For some, for some things, but today I want to give you a big pat on the back for your hard work on behalf of all New Yorkers and also Councilmember Rafael Salamanca for being a true son of the South Bronx who will be here with um, our Borough President Vanessa Gibson to make sure that everyone is taken care of. And I want to thank St. Anastasia's Church for their help as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you so much. We, we're open to questions, but it's, 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 it's um, paramount that, um, on, not yet. It's paramount that we uh, bring our ball president. You have been on the ground on both of these incidents. And so uh, 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 we want to bring on the ball president of the Bronx, Vanessa Gibson. Good afternoon. I am Bronx Bar President Vanessa L. Gibson, and I want to thank everyone for coming out today. We as a borough are absolutely devastated. Uh, yet another fire that we're facing here in the South Bronx in Longwood. Um, it completely underscores the incredible efforts of our first responders. And so I join with all of my colleagues and our mayor and our governor and lieutenant governor in commending the heroic efforts of our New York's bravest, the FDNY and the NYPD. To Captain Mosquia and the 4-1 Precinct, the entire patrol borough Bronx, 
all of our community affairs officers. We have been here from the very beginning earlier today, but certainly our first responders have been on the scene in the trenches over a week ago, responding to the devastating five alarm fire in the Fordham Heights community. That's where I was earlier today at Twin Parks Northwest when we received notification of this fire. And so while the Bronx is no stranger to fires, we are going to continue to work together as a community to make sure that we provide all of the services that are necessary for the homeowners and for the residents. And so we wanna lift up those families that have been impacted by this fire. We wanna lift up the residents who are fighting for their lives in area hospitals. We wanna lift up our men and women of the NYPD from the 401 precinct who are in the hospital. Their heroic efforts remind us every day of the dangers that our first responders are in. And so I wanna thank Mayor Eric Adams. He has been here in the Bronx far too often. We were just together yesterday in Fordham and I know that he will not leave us. The office of the mayor will be here from the beginning to the end. I wanna thank Governor Kathy Hochul and our Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin who are offering services from the state. I wanna thank again the FDNY, NYPD, Emergency Management, American Red Cross. I wanna thank the church, all the local residents who have truly stepped up. We are all in this together and through our pain, we will continue to find purpose and we will continue to work together to make sure that on the ground, all of the needs of our residents and families are truly met. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Over to any questions? On top, yes. on top of the on top of the councilman yeah, said yeah. that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who are you calling? Yeah. 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 The councilman said he was told by the FDNY this was a gas explosion. Is that correct? Currently on investigation, uh, there was only preliminary because of someone reported smelling gas, but it's currently on investigation and the fire marshals are going to do a thorough job and tell us exactly what happened to the best of their abilities. Thank you. I have a question for the fire chief. Chief. Yes. Um, if two things. Uh, one, how many units were actually destroyed? That's the first question. Um, are any of the other remaining units at risk of collapsing? And how many families have had to be so the buildings directly adjacent to the where the explosion was are completely destroyed. They'll have to be demolished. The rest of the buildings will need structural work, but they will be able to be saved. Okay, so the three units then? Three units were destroyed. And how many units are in there? I believe it's uh, five or six. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, all right. But those people will be able to go back into their units tonight? I, I don't know. Not tonight. No, they will not be able to go back tonight. They're going to be, they're going to need work. Uh, structural, um, you know, there was some structural damage to all of the buildings. Three of them cannot be saved. The other two will be able to be saved. The mayor mentioned that there was a smell of gas beforehand. How far in advance was that and how strong was that? What the circumstances of that? We had a report of somebody who did smell gas um, in, in advance of it. Um, there was an explosion, and right now we're just investigating just to make sure that we get to the, you know, the, the you know, get it right on what was the cause of this explosion. You know about how far in advance that report came in? It came in early this morning. Go ahead. So the FDNY uh, brought the two sisters, Josh, but one of those unfortunately passed away. Is that correct? Yes. And then the third person is up to 68 year old. That was the with the NYPD. Yes. Brought out. Yes. And she's expected. She said, yes, yeah, she's, she has serious injuries, but not expected to pass. And the uh, other sister, is she still in critical condition? Is that serious condition. How old is she? All of the uh, victims were in the 60s. 60. On, on top of questions, anymore? Why is ATF on the scene? What is their role? ATF works with the arson and explosion division of the NYPD, who works with the fire marshals. Any indication of foul play? Not at this time. Everything's under investigation. Any prior complaints around gas at this location or along this block? No. Down here? The injuries of the two sisters, were they actually burned in the fire? Or was no, they were not. They did not sustain burns. Okay. They had, you know, traumatic injuries from the explosion. From the explosion? Yes. So there were two sisters who lived in that unit. They were the only ones who lived in that unit? Yes. Okay, but you guys found them outside. Yes. And they are both in their 60s? Yes. One is serious, one failed. Yes. Do you have names yet on these folks? 
I do not have the names yet. Oh, oh yeah? yeah, I got a question for the mayor. Uh, what outlet are, are you? Are you are you with the press or are you mm -hmm. on, on no, that? Okay, no, then you can see me after. When I finish, I'll right talk. Now. I won't leave until I speak with you. Okay, we're gonna get the press out of the way. Anybody else? All right, thanks all. Yeah, we'll we take one or two off topics because okay. I got to bounce. Mr. Mayor, you said that the New York subway is safe and that the city needs to do more to remove the perception of fear. But today, you also said there's a battle that needs to be waged against crime in the subway system. What is your message to New Yorkers this year who say that their fear is justified? They look at the numbers in terms of crime this year and trends is already up. I know it's a small sample size. I got your question. Let me answer it. I made this clear on the campaign trail, and I made it clear again. When I made a comment that we have to deal with the perception, it was not to say we don't have to deal with the crime. I said this over and over again. I'm surprised people are distorting that. We have two things we have to do. One crime on the subway system is one crime too many. We have to deal with the crime. A thousand new officers on the system rolled out my plan. We have to deal with that. But on day one, I took the subway system. I felt unsafe. I saw homeless everywhere. People were yelling on the trains. There was a feeling of disorder. So as we deal with the crime problem, we also have to deal with the fact people feel unsafe. That's the dual battle that I have. Because if we don't do them both together, then we fail. I'm going to deal with the crime, but I'm also going to make people feel safe on their system. And that was the comment that I made. Hey, how does your perception of unsafety, your own personal feeling of unsafety, affect your ridership? Do you feel inclined to ride the train less, perhaps, because of your own feelings that you mentioned? No, I took the train today to go to Stephen McDonald's uh, service uh, today. I got on the train. I took the train throughout the week. I take the train a lot. And the real reason I know that there's a feeling of disorder is because of what I see on the train. People don't want to be on the subway system watching people yell and scream. They don't want to be on the system where they don't feel safe. And I know when I'm on this system, I feel what they're feeling because I use the system. And we must deal with the real crime that's on underground, but we also must make people feel that they are safe underground as well. Thank you. Thank you all. Who's that young man? Yes. Uh, sir, Chief, can I talk to you? Excuse me. Mr. Solomon. Councilman. Okay. It's under here somewhere. There we go. Oh, oh boy. Good catch. <laughs> uh, there we go. I'm going to replace all the batteries and it's still not working, so I think it might just might be, be cold. cold. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. 